Excuse me. Excuse me. You know that's going to end up in the episode. Somehow. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like the job. You have it birth. isolated. You have it isolated on my end. So, all right, bring us in. Bring us in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty sure I farted on last week's podcast. Did too. you really? Don't, don't put that in there. I didn't. I know think that. I might have. I think I caught it in my headphones when I was doing dishes. I was like, wait, was that just a spray, or did I like? Was that audible? Okay. What is going on, my bomb bad people? How are we doing today? We're, you know, day 86 of the quarantine. Uh, my fig- I haven't cut my fingernails for some reason. Um, and uh, I've been ordering a bunch of uh, As Seen on TV <laughs> sunglasses from the 80s that are supposed to prevent <laughs> and uh, prevent any UV lights from getting in your eyes. So I'm doing really I good I was going to say, did you buy you bought the, the HD glasses that were yes. essentially just like yellow construction workers <laughs> safety yes. glasses? I bought those good blue for you. blockers. I, I almost Amber Vision sunglasses. You almost completely derailed my entire night tonight, Scott, with the whole I haven't cut my fingernails for some reason comment. I don't know why that just like almost sent me into the floor <laughs> laughing. <laughs> uh, well, I haven't cut my fingernails for some reason. I've lost entire I've lost control. I shared on my Facebook, I don't know if you saw, you what? ever watch Rugrats when you were a yes, kid? I know it's of like a little before your time, but the reruns like are classic. Oh, dude, they're great. Like, Rugrats is classic, dude. But uh classic Nick, classic Nick. Yes. Um but I shared the – it's like a meme now where, like, Stu is up making chocolate pudding. Oh, I think it's when Angelica <laughs> – there's yes, an episode where yes. Angelica's staying the night at their house. But he's, like, up in his row making chocolate pudding. And Dee Dee comes in and she's like, why are you making chocolate pudding, Stu? It's 3 a.m. He's like, because I've lost control of my life. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Rugrats is forever – like, it's funny when you're a kid and it is freaking hilarious well, when you are a full-grown adult. You know who made the music? There's a weird music trivia here. Hey, welcome to the Bomb Bad Cast. Um, <laughs> welcome, guys. You're um, used to this. Mark Mothersblaw, it was the singer of Devo. So he made all, like, Devo, Whip It, Whip It Good, that band. Uh, yeah. And Uncontrollable yeah. Urge. Like, they, they have some great songs, but, like, he wrote all the music for Rugrats. And then a bu- if you look up what? the other stuff he wrote, he wrote a ton of stuff for 90s cartoons. I'm pretty sure the uh, – what's the one about the um, – Katie knows it. Um, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Tell me. I, that was my that was my decade. What's, who, what's the one – what's the Nick cartoon that you like so much? The one that had the Australian um – Rocco's Modern Life. Pretty sure what the theme of Rocco's Modern Life. Oh, yeah. Rocco. Yes. I wasn't allowed to watch that when I was a kid because um, I think they said butt. I yeah, really I think they had exactly something suggestive why. sometimes. Yeah. Like, I think he was like, wasn't yeah, he like a single? Like, he was kind of like a hey, single dude. Butt. It's like a sexual yeah. dude, SpongeBob. He tried to get laid in that cartoon, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. sure. That car- I'm pretty sure that cartoon was like The Simpsons for 12 year olds. Yes. Um, which is the actual Simpsons if you're like in the 80s, I guess. So, what's up, Bomb um, Bad fam? Welcome what's to up? The- <laughs> we have a very- if you're if you are a, if you're a new listener, welcome. <laughs> if you are a classic Bomb Bad, if a classic Bomb Bad, if you're a part of the Bomb Bad fam already, like you've been with us for a while, this is like just this is so normal. This is like part of the norm. No man. guest. Like, well, there's no guest yeah. now. It's just like the first. There's no guest. Are just there's no guest. We did no notes again. No, this time's no notes. We're getting loose. This quarantine has made us insane. My finger, I can't type. Fast like, and listen, loose. this is what happens when I type. <laughs> I'm gonna keep talking to you guys right here because uh, Scotty in in do- oh he does okay in doing his foley work. Scotty completely <laughs> ruined his recording. <laughs> Oh, please leave this in. Please. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. 
Maybe we can't keep this in, but that is this is pure gold. I wish I'm back. This was, We're back. We're recording. I, just I, wish like, this was, I wish this was live. This is me. This is me. I didn't make it any easier. This is my fingernails on the keyboard. S- this is what oh, it sounds sick. like. <laughs> it's like scratching. I have, I have well, I say I, I have just about the same. Like it's like backwoods mountain man fingernails, you know? Because you, you, play you have to banjo. be able to grab on to you have to be able to reach into the, the stream and grab a fish like a bear out. You know, like, like pull it out and like dig those nails in there. You know, you got to really dig them in. Um, Jerry, also, you know so you can funny? like grab a, a hawk out of the sky. That's you know, badass. A wild turkey or a deer to the ground. Well, you know, I am. I I I, uh, I do what I, I can. My beard's coming back. So yes, me and Allison, dude. Okay, I was like, what was it? We she found a video, or there was a video on Facebook. I think it was of me opening up something for my new studio down here. My new studio <laughs> is essentially a uh, cat tower and two quilts. Uh, sectioning off a corner, but uh, it was such a studio. big word. I would say office, just to make it sound not as fancy. Office. This is the Bombad Cast official studio, and it is officially uh, official. Um, Rick, Rick, get out of here. Go back home. It's a, there's a quarantine. Gosh, that guy. Uh, away, though, everyone. He's where even were we going? Rick, shout out, Rick. What I was trying to get to was with this entire monstrosity of an right. episode already. Um, I forget <laughs> I was going to say my beard looked amazing. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Go on. It's right, right before validate. I shaved my beard and it was epic. It was epic. So anyway, continue, continue. No, um, what I wanted to get to is if you can't tell already, this quarantine has made us quite stir crazy. Um, Jerry, ha- Jerry and I have been paired up with our significant others for a prolonged period of time. And we've been trying to tease us. Do you, I wish you could see it. I'm not, I don't, I can't make this up. Jerry's literally holding a Jowie House action figure and smiling and looking at it. <laughs> completely unscripted. I was thinking, you ruined it, you ruined it. I was, I was trying to think of a joke <laughs> about how I'm like, my quarantine beard is currently at Jowie House facial hair levels. Where it covers all my face except for my nose, my cheekbones, and my eyes, eyes. and forehead. Yes. You know, an antenna. Um, I just wish anyone but could, like, no one could see it. But like, it's, it it's it thin. Up. It's like thin. So it's like, it's a, there's a layer if you can't see any skin, but it's like so thin. It's like the hair is my skin. Yes. Yes. So. You should have seen it. He just look. he literally just for, picks it up. And thanks for. He's it's been on my desk ever since we recorded the We Serve Droids episode. Oh, man. Episode. He just been just was, giving... Man, we were talking about... Oh, that was a great episode. We were talking about Bomb I hope everyone, weirdos, I hope everyone enjoyed the, that. The Ronto is still here, too. The Ronto so in I your bed. I think these things are just... No, it's moved from the bed because Allison told me that if she, like, rolls over on it one more time, um, I'm going to have to uh, get an apartment. So... <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't the purchase of your of your so- Skywalker saga that caused any issues. It was the Ronto no, in the bed. It wasn't blowing two hundred and fifty dollars that we didn't have with a credit card that I'm going to pay back with you know probably um, tax the, incentive money. Yes. Whatever the government whatever government check I'm going to get. I'm joking. I'm going to pay it off responsibly. We have cre- good credit. Blah 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 blah. I'm letting you guys really into my my personal life tonight. Um, oh, but it is man. definitely. The Ronto <laughs> action three and three quarter scale <laughs> Ronto uh, with Jawa bucking action. There you can hear it right now. All that's missing is the swoop bike with the dude with the tall hat on it. You know, that's going a sh- by I wish we could see his front, hat. the swoop bike guy. So this leads so. to our discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I know the Bombad cast can be broken, but the big discussion we're going to discuss today, what, <laughs> what you're going to hang out and, and, and maybe take away with you once this is all over, is the idea of Star Wars being broken. And yes, it is a very interesting thing that can be stated about the idea of something being broken. Um, Jerry has been the brainchild for a ton of episodes recently, and Jerry really developed this one. We've got a couple in the works that are going to be pretty cool coming from the both of us. But um, Jerry... What do you mean by the phrase? Because something must have inspired this before any of this took place. What is? What do you mean? Can Star Wars be broken? Like, well, I, I got the special edition VHSs. How can Star <laughs> besides, Wars? Besides, be- besides this, Star Wars was broken in 1997 and has never been repaired. So, <laughs> episode over. There you go. Close the book. Um, I didn't mean it, Joe. I didn't mean it. 
Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, I, I, I get to thinking about the little catchphrases that get thrown around too much because yeah. I'm an overanalyzer. And um, they end up getting tossed around in my in in the dryer, the drying machine, the washing machine that is my brain, until out the other end pops this idea of yes. well, this quintessence or this um, this question for the ages, if you will, uh, for fandom of <clears throat> how many times have you heard this breaks Star Wars. This breaks Star Wars. I heard it at least for a couple of things in Last Jedi from even some of my friends. Bombs can't fall in space. The thing that really, that, that, I guess I never really heard the star, that breaks Star Wars for people, but the big thing you heard it with was the Holdo Maneuver. And I, again, in very classic Canon Junkie form, have in my shrine of things everyone hates from Star Wars a... He's grabbing it, boys and girls. He's grabbing it. Okay, drum roll. <laughs> Amelin Holdo, Black Series action figure, which is amazing, actually. I love it. Yeah. She's beautiful. Um, very purple, very awesome. Um, she has pew-pew face action. Mm-hmm. She makes the, the words with her mouth whenever you, you squeeze her. I'm joking. She doesn't do that. But um, <sighs> a lot of people said that the Holdo maneuver – breaks Star Wars. And I had very smart intellectual friends. Me who, too. Me too. Who thought that about Star Wars. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I had a friend <laughs> like, who was upset about the Yoda striking the tree. Like immediately after the movie, he was very upset that Yoda used the force to to burn the, the Jedi tree right. on TLJ. He said it was just too overpowered. It made no sense. And I was like, just little, well, it's little things like that that I think it, people it, cling to and they get upset about and then they, they claim that it broke Star Wars. And it might have for them, well, which is an important thing to acknowledge. But the idea of Star Wars being broken is kind of ridiculous because it within itself is a ridiculous thing. Right. So the I don't know. Um, well, well can, let's get that. Let's go ahead. Well, I was going to say, let, let's get that like clarified right yes, now. Yes. Star Wars will never be broken. Yeah. Star Wars, I don't believe can as a franchise be broken. How you feel about Star Wars can a hundred percent be broken. Yes. And every Scotty, every single one of us have the line. There is a line, and we're going to probably find that out tonight. What I our can lines say are. mine. We'll I can see. definitely state mine, but keep going. But our, yeah, well, our line of what, if they cross this line, I don't think if it'll ever come back. And I'll, well, I'll go ahead and say, because you, get, well, you know how I am. I freaking, I, I'm okay with Jedi Rocks and the special editions. Of course. I love Amal and Holdo. That doesn't break a, Star Wars for me either. Um, it doesn't. I, I, no. I, it's, right, 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 it's right. something I don't like, but it will it, never not feel like Star Wars because I know the original creator had an intent to do this. And honestly, yes. Star Wars has always had bands in it. Star Wars has always had right. music involved. John Williams in the back and right. then Jow Kiel's in the front. You know, it's just like it's – it's. Well, it, it, it's we just, could have good fun going back and forth, me and you, about that stuff in good fun and good, yeah, innate, you know, a of good course. nature discussion and have fun and entertain people with how much we you know, exactly hate each other. Yes. But uh, the thing is, and maybe this will be something we could talk about tonight too, Scott, is how to react when something seems to break Star Wars of for Of course. Us. Of course. Um, I think that could be because in classic Bombay cast fashion, we give you the laughs, we give you the nonsense, we give you the thinky-thinky stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, we maybe we give you a little thinky-thinky tonight. I don't know why I'm saying thinky-thinky, like but it. there it is. There it is. And th- with that being said, dealing with everything related to breaking Star Wars, this has not just been a sequel trilogy thing because you can easily look back at the original trilogy and find moments that are kind of, this is strange, this this is kind of not normal. And then you can find moments also in the prequel trilogy, which is a big one that Jerry can kind of discuss because right now we are thankfully living in a prequel renaissance where people kind of forget the stuff that was said about the prequels back in the day. I mean, if you talk bad about Jar Jar, people are almost kind of like now like, okay, that's... Yeah, ha, ha, ha. like when J.J. originally said, uh, we're going to put a, the skull of George R. Binks on Jakku. We thought about doing that. And like the populace reacted like, oh, yeah. Ha, ha. But like right. any Star Wars fan, like on this level, listening to the Bombad cast probably was like, eh, 
that's a little distasteful. Right. Like you know, I think like, I was like, because I had learned by that point to go, ha, 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 yeah, that's a funny thing. Yes. But can we stop with the Jar Jar? I think that was, that was the point where I was finally like, ah, okay, all right. Yes. But yeah, he, he just was there to make the kids laugh, man. Yes. Calm down. Like, calm, yes. calm down, JJ. Like, go, go, or go have another monster energy drink. The part people With your hat on backwards, JJ, well, and just, just go, I'm sorry, I'm going off on JJ. No, no, no. Um, darn you, JJ Abrams, creating the Force Awakens. You broke Star Wars. <laughs> Oh, with a name like oh, JJ. It's I just George. imagine JJ. JJ's got the <laughs> hair of like and the like the glasses. He looks like he dr- he comes to set each day on a skateboard <laughs> with like a hat turned backwards. He's a little like too old to be up. on a skateboard. Like he's like he, <laughs> yeah, he's a hundred percent. Um, um. Oh, what's the the actor's name? I I I know his name. I've forgotten it. The there's the gif of him walking up saying like, "Hello, fellow kids." Like oh, that's JJ uh, Abrams, hundred percent. Steve Buscemi, yeah, it was like 100% Steve Buscemi, like just walking up, like, "Hello, fellow kids. Hey, you want to shoot a scene about Ray today? Um, like, <laughs> you want you want to you want to shoot a scene where uh, we lift a rock? Yeah, let's do it. That, well, that was Last Jedi. Like, oh, it's TJ T- T- uh, man. Broking, yeah. breaking, breaking but, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're back to. Now that my dumb ramblings are over, Scotty, you're right, though, that it, it, it's throughout all the movies. And I can speak a little bit to some of the prequel stuff. In fact, I've been rewatching, preparing to do like I've been rewatching the 4K uh, box set release. So um, awesome. Just to like well, and I rewatched all the movies just recently on Disney Plus, too. Yeah. Right before it came out. And then I am now, again, on a rewatch trying to, you know, really go in depth because I want to do a review of them. But Mm -hmm. I was watching, I think, I think it was Attack of the Clones. It was Attack of the Clones. And um, it was the big Dooku Yoda fight. Yes. Which, don't get me started on the crazy re-edit that George did and didn't change the music or anything. So it sounds like a chopped up mess uh, whenever Dooku's trying to escape. Have you noticed that? No. Go watch the original. It's a completely different sequence. They changed the sequence of events, like how, I don't know, they almost make Dooku wait too long now. Um, wow. They like, they, there's another, man, we're about to get into the special edition changes of the, or the I quote want unquote to be the special editions of the. People to market that, because that is something dude, that can we're gonna be. We're going to do an episode. That's going to be one of our quarantine episodes. It's going to be one of those um, bomb ad buildups for super analytical. Yeah, <laughs> but of course, um, next week we got a really cool episode coming up for you guys. Of yes. course, we'll, we'll drop some details about that at the end of the episode. So. Um, no, um, but keep explaining the, the what, what breaks it. What, what's something that what, that what you people noticed. got so upset about in there? I remember there was a couple things. You you had I remember some people being like, well. And this was a couple years after. This was down the road after I was out of high school. Yeah. Uh, so like the first maybe five years. After a couple of years, people were like, I don't know, man. Just kind of make like Yoda had a lightsaber and now he's just like he was all old and now he's on Dagobah like he can't move. It's like people can't get past that. We mm-hmm. had the better special effects. So George wanted to do Yoda and his prime yes. fighting. And then now it's like. It, it almost for them, a lot of people, that's one wall some people can't cross. That's yes. one wall the line that people have where it's like the prequels, all this new crazy stuff that the Jedi can do happen. And it makes me wonder why they didn't do that kind of stuff in the original, you know, in the story wise, in the original trilogy, mm-hmm. even though I know they couldn't because of those restraints, it, it breaks it for me. That's one. Another, and this is a one that actually made me think of this episode, Scott, oh. was y- when, Dooku says the whole, he starts to shoot force lightning at Yoda. He goes, I've become more powerful than any Jedi, even you. And he shoots the force lightning with that cool, like little yeah. hand tilt that he yeah. does. Um, just very subtle. Uh-huh. And Yoda catches it yeah. and throws it back. Yeah. And then catches it again and like it disappears in his hand or he absorbs it. Yeah. And then um, he- Oh, also how he, uh, uh, he sh- uh, sorry, Dooku shoots it at Obi Wan earlier, and Obi Wan huh. deflects it with his lightsaber. Yes, yes, that's the big one. So many people after that were like, well, "Why didn't Obi Wan teach Luke how to do that?" Oh. When the whole day and a half he had with them on the Falcon, yeah. why didn't he do that? 
<laughs> Why didn't he teach him the Day lights when he was just teaching it him to like deflect? like seven hours. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why yeah. didn't he do that in the five hours they had together? Yeah. Um, which, again, is like, I know. I'm making big... I'm making it light. I'm making light of it. Um, I'm making it light. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But that was a that seriously I I forgot about that Scott until I was watching that and I was like oh yeah people were like upset about this that. like really ruins Return of the Jedi for me and this and again if it does that for you that's fine of course but it's funny to me how many times you hear broken and it's mainly online again yeah. we can deal with this in our normal lives just we want to go online and complain about stuff that's what that's what social media is for uh, to an extent. It could be for more positive things, but but we want to make people agree with our opinion or else. That's where it gets wrong, and no, that's where these lines not, you don't your your line is not someone else's line, but these lines have existed. Yes, since the Ewoks came into into being, since oh. Darth Vader was co- made when they said Luke Darth Vader was Luke's son. Yes, or Luke the other way, the yeah. other way. Darth Vader was Luke's father. Yes, um, that made people upset. Yes. Um, there's been every Star Wars movie, just about, except for the first one, has had something. Maybe. I, has, I almost, can you can almost yeah, say the first I think one. So. Maybe. I don't know. It, it, that's the thing. Like, there's, there's a lot <laughs> of things. Not until 1997. Yeah. Not until 1997 with the first one when they when Jabba first showed up, you know? <laughs> Breaks it for me. No, um, there, <laughs> there, are, there are a few things that I can say just with the prequels alone that – you could say, man, that broke Star Wars for me, and I and yep. I would I would understand. Though I don't think it truly breaks it in the sense of like it's unwatchable now. You know what I mean? Like I, I just the idea of the planet core is something that I think is pretty silly. How someone would be able to right. to take a ship through the planet core, which would be magma, which is all but, water. Yes, yes, it's all water on that planet, man, because space magic. But also, <laughs> they might mean it in a metaphorical way, not in a literal yeah. way. So you right, can like take the it. heart of the planet. Yes, and stuff. Yeah, yes, kind of. The we caves. say we're going through the heart of darkness. We're going yes, the heart. It's, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's um, that's one thing I can kind of interpret from that, and I imagine that might have been one of the complaints you might have heard as well. Just the. I actually honestly never heard anything about the Planet Core ah. until recently and stuff, and honestly yeah. maybe until now in this this moment. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but no, but I have thought about that before. How that's like it's really weird that the core of Naboo is just fresh water, water, this nice and, uh, cold water. And it could be salt. It could be salt water. I don't know. The salt. No, I didn't, maybe it's, I'm getting too sciencey. Science and Star Wars do not mix. Do nope. not. And that's the part. Not, Wait, it's not Reese's. It's not Reese's. It's not a Reese's cup. It's not chocolate and peanut butter. It kind of is. Yeah. It is. But don't get don't get into the nitty gritty of like is it crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Mm-hmm. It's always creamy. Okay? Yes, <laughs> there are no there are no nuts. No, there are no physical nuts to but, to be evaluated here. But to kind of go back into your point, can Star Wars be broken? Yeah. Um, you can li- look through the most recent films, which are receiving the, probably the most amateur and professional, uh, you know, observations right now. It's both. It's right. both ends. It's both amateur and professional based on how you understand stars and how you interpret stars is how you will claim if something is broken or not. And uh, TLJ, honestly, was the one that kind of uh, challenged a lot of the viewers of these films, um, especially when it came to the science falling in space, which I'm going to be real with you. That's nitpicking. And it's really annoying. <sighs> I'm yeah. just when you watch it. Can I say when you watch it? Scene, that's I had a, not the point ahead. of that scene. You're not supposed to watch yeah. and say, well, wait a second. How? Wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 yeah. those giant balls fall in space. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's truly it was one so of those frustrating. Things. It's frustrating because I, I had a friend who actually kind of liked TLJ, but had some that was one of his big issues. Now cannot stand it and kind of hasn't liked anything since and yeah. like made a big deal, which Star Wars is a big deal to people. That's of why course. we make a big deal. We're so passionate about it. Yes. Made a big deal about how I can't believe this is the first Star Wars movie that's ever come out that I'm not going to buy. And I'm yes. like, why do you have to make? And I think that leads to the big issue of why it seems like we can't have a discussion anymore. Yeah. It's because social media, we're, we're, 
it seems like we're, I sound so old right now. And the uh, social medias, you know, all the Facebooks and the, the MySpaces and all the, 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 the books and stuff. Um, no, but all of the social medias, man. Um, I don't think it's that, I think the conversation still needs to exist. We still need to be able to talk about these films. Yeah. But the, the hate for the prequels that the prequels had, that kind of hate mm-hmm. can be on blast in today's society because, yeah. and it's like, if someone has an opinion, it's almost in your face. You can mm-hmm. mute it. That's why you got to be careful about, we did our positivity episode, you got to mute. Mm-hmm. But like, it's, I don't know. It, I, I feel like the conversation should exist, but it should exist respectfully. And, of course. Um, uh, it's, it's just all up in your head. And I think I completely derailed your point, whatever you're no, trying to make. So no, 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 <laughs> you're no, talking no. About the, We're talking about the bombs falling in space. But, but like, seriously, like we have to, we feel like we have to get our displeasure out because yes. we want to find other people who feel the same. Yes. Um, and it's just us of a different opinion don't mm-hmm. need to always assume Mm-mm. that you're trying to change my opinion to yours. No. And sometimes because it's not. Well, sometimes it's difficult because it's very easy on these medias and these these forms of communication to make a blanket statement. A blanket statement uh, a, or a blank – I don't know the exact phrase. A statement that they don't need to validate. And that's one thing right. that I think a lot of people have frustrations with. I myself, if you're going to make a bold statement, Star Wars is broken because this, 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 and then they don't know how to validate it. It's just – why make a statement at all? But if you're entitled, you're entitled to your opinion. But your opinion's got to have at least some backing that will make well, n- not logical it, sense. It doesn't even have to. It doesn't even have to have facts. It just needs to be like presented in a way that, like, here's how I feel. Not yeah. this is the way it is, and yes. you're an idiot if you don't agree with it. Yes, yes, that's that's the problem. And it can, that you don't have to straight up call someone an idiot for it to end up, uh, feeling like mm-hmm. you're, that's what you're saying, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, like that we're getting on a completely different topic. I no, think, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's not, I guess, I see, it's like, honestly, um, solitude has made me very salty. Yes. And so here, here we are. Okay. <laughs> so let's, you know what I can do right now? And I'm not even kidding. I'll go on a spontaneous search. There's a subreddit called r slash saltier than crate. And they are all about hating the sequel trilogy. And I'm oh, sure we careful. can find some really good material. If you're into saltier than crate, you go, Scotty. Only pain will you find. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, you're welcome. If I think I can, that every time someone talks about something. Well, if I – if the only thing – and the word break is really complex – I don't know if Star Wars is going to be broken, but Star Wars is beautiful because it can be self-referential in a weird way. Like the right. fact that the Life Day was mentioned canonically on the Mandalorian, that is not breaking Star Wars. That is it being self-referential in terms of something yeah. that we all know exists, <laughs> but we didn't know it that really was, existed. Like it, right. was, it was a confirmation more than it's anything. It's the diegetic music. It's like diegetic music that we talk, you know, like that that uh, David Collins talks about. Mm-hmm. You know, the music that exists in there, like the Imperial March, is an actual song. Yes. in the Star Wars universe but now, it's and happy. it's not just because of Solo. No, it's not just. Everyone was like, "Oh man, it was in Solo." Oh man, you fit you posers. Wasn't it in Rebels? It was you posers. It was in Rebels first, uh-huh. man. Uh-huh. Um, it was the yeah. It was they did like a parade march, like a yep. version of it. Yep, almost. Almost exactly like uh, the parade march in Phantom Menace versus yes. the Emperor's theme. Well, it was. It's so good. So well, good. well, that's the thing. It's it's the idea of it being broken, but it's also self-referential. Now, it it sounds makes jokes within itself. You know, um, like the uh, one thing that really kind of I'm thankful for that hasn't been hap- that hasn't happened yet. I wouldn't say it would break Star Wars because. It's a big, that would be a tif- very difficult pencil to break on your forehead. Like, let's be real. Like, yeah. all, how could it break <laughs> all of Star Wars? Like, truly, that yeah. would be, it would almost be impossible. But if at one point 
I, I don't think it would break Star Wars, but it'd be something I'm like, okay, that's just bizarre. If a character was like, what are we? And a, gal- a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away? Is that what we're doing right now? Like, if a character yelled that, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> That's a little too much, but... I don't know, Scott. I don't know. You don't like it whenever Han calls Jabba a human being, so... <laughs> that doesn't break it for... It doesn't break it for me, but it does ruin sure, the scene. Sure, sure. It does I'm ruin the kidding. scene. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Let's be honest. That entire scene ruined that scene for you. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> the fact that it I even think, exists. <laughs> I think in the new 4K version, I got to rewatch my older version, man, uh-huh. but I think that they moved Boba Fett. Was he standing right beside Jabba when he, like... Turns around to see Han. I thought he was further in the back. Maybe he I thought he was, but like he's like be, like right beside Jabba. Whenever mm. ha, Jabba turns around and goes, uh, Mibuki, Mata da Tweepy, and stuff. So I, because I remember watching that the other night, going like, "Whoa, wait a second! What is Boba Fett? Has he always been there?" To that break, like Star rubbing Wars my for eyes. You? I'm like rubbing my eyes. It <laughs> broke Star Wars in the best way. I was like, "Yeah, man." Have him, like, riding in, like, a baby Bjorn on Jabba's chest. And, like, maybe everyone will love it even better, you know? Like, <laughs> that visual is incredible. Can you imagine, like, Jabba wearing, like, like a mommy and me, like, papoose <laughs> on his front? And Boba Fett's just, like, sitting there, like, knees, like, up at his chest, going, like, you're no good to me dead solo. <laughs> uh, how's, how's it going? We're cool right now. We're cool right now. Just wait till the next movie. Um, that could break Star Wars for some people. Okay, well, well, what would break it for you? Is there a breaking point? It would have to be. It would have to be like I've someone winking at the camera and being like, "What's up, Star Wars fam?" I, yeah. It, I've I've had moments. Again, I don't know if it like breaks where where I've almost been like, "Oh, I don't know if I like that." Um, a couple big ones in Rebels. Like whenever the the second season episode, the finale where like the they're on Malachor, yeah, and the, uh, the this is something that a lot of people didn't really care for, but it doesn't bother me now. I find that I'm like whatever. But the the helicopter lightsaber blades, I was like, how is it even possible? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, that was one of them too. That, I was like, this is ridiculous. Which that's well, then I was like, uh, is it really Something necessary that, for me to think about the physics of a lightsaber yes, blade. Yes. Like a l- blade made of light that connects with another blade. I don't think so. Um, I don't need to really think about this too hard. Whatever. It happens. And I don't hate it now. No. It's just, I guess with me, I don't know why I'm so zen Yeah. with Star Wars. I give Star Wars so many, like, it, I can, even if I'm like, eh, I don't really care for that. I'm just like, man, Whatever. Like, yeah. all of the, the prequel stuff, there's stuff that I'm like, man, that's kind of cringy. Man, in Return of the Jedi, I can't really, I don't really like the line where Luke is talking to Leia on the bridge. I'm going to oh, out yeah. myself right here. I don't like the line where Luke's talking to Leia. I think I've said it before on here, but, and he goes, talking about Darth Vader being his father, which I'm also like, Leia's not immediately like, like, wait, wait, so he's my dad too? Which is funny. Yeah. But, but it's the part where he goes, I know I can turn him back to the good side. Ooh, like, why are you weird. calling it? I'm like, why are you calling it the good side? Is that this is like, weird. it's, it's, and it's funny because like my wife made the observation when we were watching Rise of Skywalker in December, mm-hmm. whenever the, I am all the Sith and I am all the Jedi. She leans over to me and goes, that sounds like a couple 12 year olds, like a couple of kids on the playground playing like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm all the, I'm all the Sith. Oh yeah. Well, I'm all the Jedi. Boom. Well, you, you, I blew you up in your throne and all your followers, all your followers are dead now. It's all, all dead. I said, no take backs, no take backs. Um, <laughs> it, but that's kind of, that's kind of in the DNA of star Wars, but also it's like, why didn't Luke just say, I'll turn, I know I could turn him back to the light, to the light. You can still be kind of like cheesy, but like just a little, like George pull back just a bit. What a funny you know, analysis. Like, I, I do have, I do have times. I do have times where I'm like, George, just second. pull pull it back, pull it back a yeah. bit, man. But I I love the I just love the weirdness too much. Uh, sometimes it's, it, so. it's so weird because that's so amazing because you can 
essentially, it's just a weird phrase, but you can bathe in it. Like you can live in those moments because <laughs> you can. There's tons of them. Yeah, there is. Like the there's, the any, there's like a multiplicity of them. Any of Anakin's lines in front of the fireside, like oh, by the fire. Oh my god! It's just so uh, the kiss that left a scar that once broke my heart. Like whatever the line is, it's like <laughs> it's hor- It sounds like a again poorly written MCR <laughs> song by an eight year old. It's just like it's, oh. Don't I was gonna say don't make fun of MCR. No, I would they, never they make fun of Jarway. No, Jarway Jar is playing. amazing, but it's just like that. <laughs> the phrasing was just like it's like when you do your George. Why I really you know like when you dude. I and I said you you guys heard if you listened if you haven't listened to me on uh, Around the Galaxy go listen to it because I talked I think I've mentioned it on here before haven't I where like all I do to get enjoyment out of those creepy lines. Is to go for it for canon's sake. I'm like, okay, he was this dude was taken when he was ten. He yes. didn't really have much interaction I with agree. girls, no, and or at least of his and like he was told you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And now he's well, like, oh man, oh man, what's happening down there? Oh no, oh <laughs> man, oh no, what's what am I gonna do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't say this next part after doing that bit. But well, uh, if you can imagine, if you can imagine George Lucas saying all of the lines, it's funny. Think of George Lucas in the '90s writing dialogue for a 20-year-old, for a 19-year-old, and a 24-year-old person. Yeah. This is a love, like forbidden love. This is from the Lucas. Idea Lucas was a, trying a to write dialogue. Band. But a sixty, a fifty, yeah, I think it was like fifty at the time or something. Yeah. He was, he was, dude, he was, he was well beyond, well within middle age. Yeah, trying to write love dialogue for just out of teenage. Just think of it. Uh, that that kiss uh, has become a scar. Um, I'm haunted by the kiss you uh, you should have never given me. Um, That's uh, good. Very well, my lady. Uh, 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 saga, as I, I don't, I get, I can't, I can't think of the lines now. But like, just think of George, like think of all those lines in George's voice. But wait, it kind of um, goes back to I your truly, point. I truly, deeply care. Right. I love you. Love you too. Um, I, uh, it kind of goes back to your point though. That doesn't break it for uh, me. I hate it. Them. It makes me. It gives me a different way to look at it because right. If of course. And if it does break it for I you, that's sand. completely fine. I can I can almost understand why it might actually break it for you, but it can't ruin. Essentially, to me, it will not ruin all of the Attack of the Clones. Right. It will not ruin all of Star Wars. For Star Wars to be broken, can it would I? have to literally be like. It would. The only way it can be broken to me is if it was super fourth wall and like a lightsaber, like cuts the yeah. front lids of a camera off and they're like cut get a new camera right. and they show the set of a movie being made and be like okay <laughs> that's that's like unbelievably or, austin powers like it's just like or so have ridiculous. like the opening that that a lot of people wanted for rise of skywalker to uh, be like which one? skywalker waking up in his hut oh and like going like it was all a, or like the opening crawl to be it was all a bad dream. Like <sighs> you guys are terrible writers. Where did you did you like write all the sitcoms Jesus. in the eighties and nineties? You you plebs. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm using that word correctly, but Neither I just do I. use it because I, I like that word. I feel like plebs. I don't know uh-huh. what that really means. Pleb plebeians plebeians. Probably really um, pissing off some people, but uh, <laughs> I probably am. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but a naivety. stupid white man. I'm but a stupid white man. I'm sorry. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it it, well, it would really take a lot for Star Wars to be truly broken in my eyes. It would literally have to be just so tongue in cheek, or not even tongue in cheek. If it's tongue bursting out of the side of a cheek, it would have to right. be so like truly <laughs> ridiculous. Like seriously, it would have to be like that. Yeah. Like a movie set, literally just being exposed Dude. halfway through, or. The in, in Rebels, in Rebels, whenever like uh, I forget his name too, but the droid played by Steven Stanton, the C three PO to uh, Chopper's R two D two. Give me a second, um, I'll think I, of it. I am having I I always do this. Cannon Junkie, yeah, right. Um, but anyway, when he gets like 
thrown off the ship and is yeah. like getting surrounded by the the butterfly creatures in oh, space and singing. Dude, that's my favorite. That's honestly one of my favorite. Oh, see Star that Wars. when I first saw it, I was like, "What is this? What it is going? So what is happening?" Weird. Like when it first started, it was so bizarre, and I was like, "What is happening right now?" I probably the first time you ever saw Jedi Rocks is how you react. Like, what is happening? <laughs> I don't hate it now, though. I don't hate it, what but I'm like, name? that is so oh. out of left field. It like you do not see it coming. Then all of a sudden, he's like singing. Um, I'm like, what is this? Is this is this some uh, improv skit that me and my friends are writing? What's going on? Oh, uh, but so no, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But that is, um, that's a thing that almost like it, most of my things were in Rebels. You know, yeah. I've even had some stuff, man, where I've said if they do X, Y, or Z, I don't think I'll like it. Yeah, and I've been proven wrong. You know? Exactly. That's the um, thing. And I think that's how it's supposed to be. Like, yeah. truly. Yeah. I think that's how it's supposed to be a lot of the times. Because it's Star Wars is all about pushing you to the next level of where you should be thinking and where you are. That's that's my opinion, at least. I think Star Wars should always be, like, really thought-provoking, really um, maybe kind of testing how you feel on certain things and challenging you as a person. And this could be... Right. Um, this could be as little as that as the musical moment, but you got to realize when you take a step back, let's be a thousand percent real with each other. You are literally watching a kid's cartoon. <laughs> like, like it's like, yeah. like yeah. this is designed for, for the ages between like 10 and 14. And that right. is it. This is not, <laughs> you know, this is not a deep analysis. Right. I mean, it, but you can't, you can't analyze well, I it that mean, way. That's, that's the thing about star Wars stuff is there are little moments. It, it like they, they try to make it for everyone. Um, which is why I, I had another conversation about, I think I mentioned something about how I was like complaining about people not liking, I was complaining about you, Scott, about people not liking the Ahsoka episodes. Um, you know what? I actually, I've, I've changed my opinion and I'm not kidding because I kind of took a step back. I did. I was did you very rewatch? Arrogant. Did you rewatch the second one? I want to watch it again, but frankly, dude, the castle, the castle, castle stuff was sick. Cause it was sick. It's choice. And we're going to talk about that on our, we are going to talk gonna, about yeah, that on our uh, next, uh, yes. yeah, after next week. Yes, yeah. we will. Our after our um, shows coming up, man. AP five, AP five. But yeah, no, dude, AP I really, five. I love sounds, the space honestly, walk. AP five uh, sounds like the like an app, like a, an abbreviation for an app or something. It does. You know? Maybe, like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna bring it, it up quick. on AP five and see if I can, uh, you know, change the exposure on it a little bit. Kind of does sound like a, a yeah. setting for an Instagram filter. Sounds like a, sounds uh-huh. like Adobe <laughs> or something. <laughs> Some some see. version of Adobe. <laughs> I'm gonna find that part where AP5 sings because I really do love that because it's so silly and it's so and it's uh, it's dude. I'm not gonna lie. I would love a Star Wars musical. I like musicals. That a Star Wars musical see, that would, is would be sick. Yeah, would be really that awesome. Is the moment that gets closest to it for me? I think. Yeah. Where I was like, if they were to like in like a in a serious movie, where it's not like if you're mm-hmm. coming, if I'm coming in like this is a Star Wars musical, a musical set in Star Wars, mm-hmm. I'm down. Let's do it. Whatever, whatever you want to do, man. It can be it can be canon or not. Let's just yeah. have fun, okay? I you agree. know, like make a, make a good movie, entertain me. You know, Th- Hold that's on. that's what I want. Well, I'm Zen, man. I'm Zen. I'm I'm Shiru Imwe. It's the what's but, the uh, line? It's the it's. The, let me find the lyric. It's. It's amazing to see. It's amazing to see. I fit see. perfectly. It's like he's got that like monotone voice. And this wonderful, beautiful, simply, and then he gets picked up by the by the ghost. I uh, <laughs> so I tell you comedic. what I do love about that scene is you hear him hit the back of the so like he funny. goes into the and I'm like that's kind of crazy that they're like that's really cartoony. It's amazing. Like that's straight up the most cartoony thing that happens in Rebels. <laughs> oh, that's um, amazing. That whole episode's hilarious if, with Pablo Hidalgo that, uh, oh, with the glasses. That's, and a, like, it, that's, that's like, a great episode, yeah. Oh, it's great. Droid. Um, wait, on, wait. Did, was that meant to be Pablo Hidalgo? Oh, yeah. I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Double Agent Droid. And they had they had Wedge peeing. Like, oh, my God. Because well, like you know that was, you know that was uh, Josh uh, Gad who yes. played that character. Yes. It was like, supposed to be sorry. Pablo, I, I was, think. Uh, Push my glasses up. I was well actualing you. I I just I just uh, fan splained you. I'm sorry. Did you really? No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, but too bad. It happened. It happened. Too bad I don't let a car. Uh, too bad. 
<laughs> I can't even make the joke. I was going to say, too bad I didn't let a cartoon break me. Uh, but, uh, Spit it out. <laughs> no, um, technically you did because I mean the graphics in the '90s weren't the best. <laughs> so let's just get let's just Probably leave it at that. Better so. now. Uh, no, um, it's just an interesting argument to be. I haven't had got there yet, actually. Because I know I know I'm sorry for our listeners. This is kind of all over the place, but it's one of those things like it's 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 a dense topic, but. It's only dense if you allow it to be. And that's the whole interpretation of this. If you're getting caught up on bombs dropping in space, then maybe you're not really getting the point of the entire moment. And that's okay. You don't have to get the point of it. Obviously, you're not looking hard enough. Um, You're paying attention where your eyes shouldn't be. (laughs) And that might sound really ignorant, but I mean, you can – you might not have the best intentions if that's something you will – I don't know. That that – if well, I know to, what you're trying to say. You, you're, I'm pretty unapologetic, come, Jerry. I'm, I'm sorry. You're good. No, you're good. No, because I'm kind of the same way. Like I mercilessly, it's frustrating. like, it's frustrating. Would throw that back at my friend. Like, really? Like, you're going to check? You're going to bring the laws of physics with you into a Star Wars it's movie? A Star Wars. With, you it's know, just... like, <laughs> um, newsflash: explosions and sounds can't happen in space either. No, and that's a big like, one. Link. That's a big we don't one. Link when they happen. Uh, it's just like where it is. It really is where your tolerance stops. Yes. And there's no, honestly, um, I'm going to say there's no shame in that. If you didn't like the ball, the balls, the ball, I'm going to stop talking about balls Ball dropping, dropping in space. <laughs> that happens a lot probably in Star Wars, honestly. Oof. Um, but yeah. Ooh, ooh, what color? Never mind. Um, <laughs> so, who is. Do we have Scott and Chris back on here from We Serve Droids? Man, this is getting really risque. I'm going to blame it on them. Um, but seriously, it's okay if like if the bombs falling in space did it for you. You're like, I, I can't go on because this just – that's fine. Just don't try to make anyone else feel stupid that they didn't think that was dumb. I agree. You know? I, and that maybe that um, maybe is the root of the problem because I, I have a hard time trying to convey that uh, only because well, I don't – I get fixated on other things like you're a you, terrific well, human being. Scotty, me and you come here. We don't just come here for the pew pews. We come here for the deep intellectual thoughts, dude. Of course. And like not that other people don't, but we all go – sometimes we go for different intellectual thoughts and there's no shame in that. Mm-hmm. There's no shame in going for a different level of intellectual intellectuality. But Star Wars is like 90% pew pew and 90% um, deep mythological well, ideals that those it's like just add up really well it's a weird <laughs> well it's a weird like i'm gonna that's what i'm saying dude like yeah, it's like it is. it's a it's a fraction that makes no sense no star wars i'm sorry star wars shouldn't make sense no it and, shouldn't be as loved as it is go back and listen to read a book about the making of the first one everyone mm-hmm. thought it was going to fail Watch the documentary where there's a dude shaking the cockpit of the Falcon uh-huh. instead of yeah. like hydraulics and yeah. wonder like what that dude was thinking. Yeah. You know, like, oh man, this is going to tank. I can't believe yes. I'm having to work on this piece of garbage, well, you know? One thing I want to kind of bring up too, because it's interesting. Um, there's some things that are technically, and really when you watch it, almost like, well, wait a minute, but it's still awesome. Um, is the sequence in Revenge of the Sith where two ships are going by each other and it's like an old battleship battle. Like they're not firing above and below. They have to go by each other and just like just yeah. nuke each other. Like until, cannons, man. Yeah, and who until who <laughs> makes it to the other side. Whereas if you really oh, think about fire, fire. When, Sorry. <laughs> when you think about space battle, you could almost think of 360, you know, this, these things can be coming from below, above, side, at yeah. a weird angle, behind, uh, in front. But in Star Wars, they choose to go by each other like uh, like pirate ships do. Yeah, you, know? A, uh, you know, it'd be, you know, it'd be really cool if this was like a, 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 let's have a guy swing it across to the other ship on a rope, maybe even. Um, All oh, right, that's George, a, that's what you, got a, lot said, of, you got a lot of sweet <laughs> ideas. That was the one time Rick, Rick McCallum was <laughs> like, all right, back. George. All right, George. I'm sorry. I gotta say no on this one, man. Dude, that is, that's that's that not is that is not sweet. That's not that's that's, like, an, that's complete dribble. George is like, I'll, I'll include it somewhere later, and he does. Oh, okay. I'll, 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 just, I'll, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it at the end of the movie. Yeah, I like I like the rope swinging. 
That's really one of them too. I really want Spider Man. I really want the Spider Man in, in uh, Star Wars. Uh, he's got midi chlorians. He shoots. He shoots concentrated midi chlorian webs. Uh, Whoa, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah but um, it's pretty. It's pretty sweet, well, right? If you think about the whole battle of, can I do you, the rest of the episode just like George talking to you? you like, want to? <laughs> well, there's two things I want to say. It's it's Go super. It. It's super duper interesting because. Thankfully, the Rise of Skywalker did something that I never thought they would. Exhaustion after a long lightsaber battle. How much toll it takes on your body. And you obviously can tell Rey is, like, just done. And, like, Kylo's yeah. about to win. But you watch Revenge of the Sith, and you watch these two Jedi Knights, Master and Knight, seriously duke it out for, like, 25 minutes. And not, not they're not, they're over well, lava. Like, they're over lava. At no point, they're like... <gasps> <laughs> like yeah. dying. But we got <laughs> we got we got Ray who's like Can you imagine if like George's like alright hold on we gotta we gotta make this look real okay can you <laughs> can we get some s- let's spritz spritz you and spritz him so he looks like he's really sweaty. Yeah and then uh, um um Hayden you you you're, you're hey wait you're doing that off. I just had a crazy realization the idea what? of uh Kenobi and Anakin fighting over lava versus the idea of Kylo and Rey fighting over water. You kind of the opposite. No, and then the I no I had. Sorry, that sounded really dumb. That sounded no, like no, I was no, making no, fun no. of you. There's a couple. You of things. idiot! You haven't thought of that yet. Okay, I gotta give a huge <laughs> shout out. I have to give a humongous do it, do shout it, out. It. I wish this could be the thing that gets two million views. But uh, David um, Weiser, our Weiser, I don't know his exact name. He has a Twitter page called Film Assessment. I don't know if his tweets have blown up yet, but he made parallels within the whole sequel trilogy. If you you have not seen them, Jerry, you're going to crap Ooh, your pants. It's an I assessment of... Look, look it up right now. Look, we'll do it live. I'll oh, send okay. it to you. Right. I'm telling you. I've Him and I met at Celebration. We have been friends way before this. We've been... We chatted back and forth on Twitter for a long time. Hold on. His page from assessment, he compiled a bunch of scenes um, from the entire sequel trilogy, piled them all on top of each other, and he kind of showed like just different moments, you know. Hold on, I'm, I'm sending you right now in, in your Twitter DMs. Um, God, I hope everyone takes a second and looks at these. I'm telling you, it's incredible. <laughs> All right, Jerry, it should be sent. Okay. All right. He, he takes the parallels in the sequel trilogy. He made a whole thread of them, and it's like Ray, Ray grabbing the you know hero's blade for the first time they have sound versus, too they have yeah sound. they do versus <laughs> tlj whenever she's stuck Ooh. between kylo ren and ray and then you look at the bottom one is when kylo ren finally gets it it's all parallels from the same trilogy so it's if from wow. the sequel trilogy it is dude i'm telling you some are incredible like how he Leaves us. She leaves a scar on his face, and then she heals it later. And she, and then he wrote, "Time heals all wounds." Damn good, man. I'm telling you, there's some parallels I never put together about how they fought together, and then I'm oh, sorry, yeah. how they fought each other. Then they fought together to defeat a common goal, and then at the end, they're fighting on the same side against Palpatine. Right, like, right. dude, it's it's some analysis I've never made. Or when Ray closes her eyes, how much. Every time she closes her eyes, she feels the force so much stronger when she closes it with, um, you know, before she f- she ends the battle with Kylo and the Force Awakens. Then she closes Ooh, it when she's saving, lifting the rocks. The Saving Ben one is really good. Do the Saving oh, Ben yeah. one. We just got to. I'm telling you. We're gonna I would have love to, say, to have him have to on. Like shout this guy out for real. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to try to get him on. He, he has a great uh, review page for films. But I don't know. Um. I guess to kind of wrap up this conversation, I'm sorry we kind of went all over the place with this one. This is more of a hangout <laughs> than a set episode. Um, if you guys could are put used the, that, to it. the title, the you know, it could be uh, what can we call it? Uh, Bombad <laughs> Cass. Uh, I don't know. It, it's just it's lockdown just a, thoughts. Yeah, well, I was gonna say like, can, can Star Wars be broken? Lockdown, lockdown thoughts. Can Star Wars be broken? There you go. You, Hang you out. got the title right here. There we go. Perfect. In, in real time. I'm writing it down. Uh, pre pre recorded. Pre recorded. But uh, <laughs> dude, um, it's just, I, and this is something I feel like we can bring up with other people too yeah. eventually, and just talk um, about because it, it is such a huge thing. It's like what can break Star Wars, 
how do you react when, how should we react when we feel something breaks it for us? Um, like how do we, how can we break responsibly and how <laughs> in the world, uh, can we explain these things to people to be like, look, it's okay. Like, yeah. If, if all the resistance did was fire a bunch of capital ships into stuff with like, they like, that is like, they don't have the means. They don't have the no. means to do that many hold on maneuvers. No, that shot was one in a million. That yep. was not a, that was not a, a slight on it in rise of Skywalker. Nope. That was like a, a saying, no man, that was great. But that was one in a million, man. She took her shot. Exactly. And like was a hero. And like, that's not like something that can be done. Like, Dustin Crop or going to hyperspace ain't like Dustin Crops, boy. You could bounce too close to supernova or like that end your trip real quick, wouldn't it? Anyway, um, rant over. Well, it kind of it can, this can lead really well into our Jakku jargon this week, which we haven't done in a while. So cue the Ray theme, Scotty. Thanks, Scotty. <laughs> no, um, this is a uh, this is a good one. Um, we've got some great submissions to the Jakku jargon. Um, Jerry, I don't know the original tweet you put out, but I know the responses we got are fantastic. Um, what was the original tweet? Do you remember? Well, I uh, tweeted out earlier uh, on the day of recording, and I asked, "Okay, hashtag Bombad Fam." Holdo maneuvers and bombs falling in space seem to be sticking points for people's enjoyment of Star Wars, but could anything ever break Star Wars for you? And if so, what? Best answers make it on the show. Be respectful, hashtag stay home, and above all, hashtag stay bombad. Hey, real quick, you brought up something that I haven't thought about. The idea of enjoyment of Star Wars is interesting because regardless, I don't think, I really don't think something could completely kill the enjoyment of all of star Wars or even a movie right. for me. It would have to be like, like you said with the return of the Jedi moment where you said the good side, you know, that is kind yeah, of a moment yeah. that momentarily for that brief moment, you're like, okay, but the rest of the like, movie, all right, you don't, all right, you don't watch the, the final throne room scene between Vader Palpatine and Luke and go, Oh my God, I can't believe Luke said the good side earlier. You know, that it'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll momentarily right. Right. just for a split second, make you not happy. That's a, I love how you phrase that, that Jakku jargon, Jerry. Thank you. Because oh, that's, no problem. Well, and it's important it's that you not mention even, that. I just gotta say too, it's not even that that part makes me unhappy. It's just like, I hear it and I go like, Ugh, well, I would have said light side, but all right. Yep. Boom. Done. To each, to each his own. To each his own. And it's George. done. And that's it. And that's yeah. all. That's how it should be. You can post Born about it, and, and maybe some people have the same feeling as you, but it shouldn't. That really, it. You've got to have a very strange outlook if that like ruins the entire movie for you. Like, <laughs> like, like, oh, like, garbage movie. You're a terrific human being. Ruins the entire movie. No, it does ruin that <laughs> moment that I also don't like. Right. It just makes it worse. It makes me not like it more. But then. It doesn't ruin the trench run at all, you know? It doesn't yeah. ruin the trash compactor. I'm sorry. I'm going on a rant. But um, we did get some great <laughs> this is responses. A rant. This is, we should just call this Star Wars rants. No, there you go. We no, could. We could. <laughs> no, um, we did get some great responses to this Jakku jargon. And um, our first one's actually our friend, All Remaining Systems, Michael in particular. Michael. That posted this. He said, never <laughs> think there. I'm sorry. There can be things I dislike. But nothing can ever negate the things I love. Even if Star Wars ever somehow gets to a point where it invalidates all of its core themes and ideas, they can never undo what a great piece of Star Wars content meant to me. That's damn good. That should be like the opening quote for this episode. Because it's so yeah, good. Man. It, it's just so good. Because it's On the true. DVD cover, on the back of the DVD cover, like the, when they pull quotes from like the press and stuff yes. about the movie, you're going to you're gonna be a pull quote. Um, Seriously. For, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a great one, Michael. Because it's true. I mean, maybe one day, 
<laughs> we'll get someone making a Star Wars movie that absolutely hated the sequel trilogy, and they'll put like a pile of Kylo Ren's helmets on in the middle of a scene, and you might really find right. that distasteful, and you might hate it, but you know, it's still something. It will never negate how it made you feel watching it in theaters or, you know, whatever the scene you might not like does to you. You know what I mean? Um, that really was phrased horribly. But what I'm trying to get <laughs> no, what, I'm try- what I'm trying to get at it was like it could invalidate all of its core meanings and they could really go crazy and make Star Wars primarily for white supremacists. But it can never undo what a great piece of or moment of Star Wars does to you personally right. on a human level, which is something we're going to talk about in next week's video as well, or audio recording podcast. Jerry, well, how do you right. feel about Michael's comment? I think it's amazing. I, I love it, and I agree with it. That's honestly, it, that's I think that's the core of, of how I feel too, man. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... It, I really feel like there's never any... Like, even again, like I said with those little parts, there was so much good in the rest of those episodes and stuff. Oh, of that like it can, even Even on, like... Uh, first of all, it's Do a good the- litmus test. If you can't handle... AP five singing in rebels. You're probably not going to really enjoy, uh, uh resistance, but, no. <laughs> but, no. but, uh, I'm just, I'm joking. You should check it out. Well, you know, what's funny. All AP five episode, to. I believe was this like the th- second, to last episode of the third, last episode in that season. Like you go from the, Oh, Kenobi, it was like, pretty sure it was like, there's been a big, there's been a big discussion of filler too recently. Have you know, uh, I don't know if you noticed that mm-hmm. in the ether and like, uh-huh. uh, shout out to, uh, Yoda Bauer. Yes. Uh, who of, of Star Wars Refuge, who put out a brave tweet that was 100% right, and w- you all proved her point about I need how to... the Empire Strikes Back is essentially filler. Yes. Because it's like, it, it's all the middle chapters are filler. It's them going through dark stuff. It's like, it's, a, it's the journey. It's not the beginning and end. It's the journey part. Yeah, and it's like all ultimately, the Harry Potters. You know, the first the, one sets all up the, the little the, boy. The only... The That's only right. big thing that happens is that we find out what might be a lie that Darth Vader is Luke's father. Yeah. Um, but everything else is 100% like, let's see where Luke, Leia, and Han are. And, yep. oh, oh, what happened? Han's in the thing. It's like I've seen so many episodes of people called filler of everything. I'm mm-hmm. ranting now. We, we've had so many soapboxes in this episode. We, it's pretty uh, but, intense. But, but you had uh, – I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll get off the porch in a sec, I promise. But it's like I've seen so many episodes that people have been like, oh, Phil-. that's why I've been like kind of, I guess, salty about the, the Ahsoka episodes. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, Ahsoka, like that's what I've been waiting for to see what happened to Ahsoka. And I don't want to just go straight to, I know we're like, people are like, well, it's the last season. I get it. I get it. I understand. But at the same time, I'm like, I want to see like what, she's doing and and like there's been so many great moments in these episodes that again we'll talk about uh in our uh experience that ranks everything after the show but dude you gotta like we we need to have the the spirit of of michael here the not what can break star wars can stars be broken and he says never again Things you can dis you can dislike never. things, but you can never negate the things that you love. Exactly, and no, uh, fill in the blank of what your issue with Star Wars is. It can be it can be a fake one about bombs falling in space. It could be something that is re- a very real concern. Kelly Marie Tran not getting a lot of time mm. in uh, Rise of Skywalker, which genuinely um, kind of upset me. But that's something that's, that yeah, that's it didn't break. You it. can like things, you can like things, and you can have opinions and mm. still love. Love things, mm-hmm. and Star Wars is a big animal to love. So, oh, maybe we of course, should continue, Scotty. Who's, yes, who's, who's our next? Who's our next one? Our next one. Give me one second. Our next one was, I believe, from Haley Meyer. Yes, uh, Haley Sh- Shapely Buns, great fan of the show. Um, says well, and, Star uh, Wars. member of the Bombad Fam. Uh, yes, uh, Facebook group. So yes. Thank, hey, Haley, what's up? Um, she wrote, Star Wars scores have so far been perfect. I don't think I would go see a Star Wars movie if it had a soundtrack that was full of catchy pop tunes from the 2000s. I, you know what? If it had, I agree with her statement, but honestly, if there was like a, and we've got it too in its own weird way um, for the, for the uh, Galaxy's Ed soundtrack, but if there was a catchy pop oh, tune, dude. but like vocally done 
as Star Wars. And it not, not, it can't be the whole movie soundtrack. Well, you know what I mean? I think I think she's meaning like like what they wanted to do for Star Wars in 1977, which yeah. was the 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 trend was to do like like have country roads yeah. take me home yeah, yeah. and like I mean all the, uh, the that that song was out by then right yeah sure yeah sure. it was John Denver mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. good go John Johnny Denver. that came out um, I believe in seventy three but I'm it, I'm gonna it's fact like check if myself. you had a Star Wars movie right now and yeah. you were like um, who's the big who's big, big now um, he's like hey Billy Eilish yes uh, you want you want to do a Star Wars you know kind of like the Bond um, themes like kind of like the seventy one yeah. is when when uh, Country Roads came out but um. Uh, yeah, like the Bond themes. Like that's the point of Bond. They usually take the most relevant person at the time yeah. to do a music for that. But I would, yes, I would ve- be very upset if I was watching the Phantom Menace and the Backstreet Boys showed up, and not even just in person, Can, but like they almost did. But like they're the Backstreet. <laughs> yeah. How would what the Backstreet if, Boys? Okay, let me let me set the stage for you, Scott. Okay, here we go. We're watching this very epic Ryan Johnson uh, Star Wars film. You've got. Our, our main character, whoever it is, who've just found out they can wield the force, they call the lightsaber to their hand yeah. as the, the villain looms over them with their red, fiery blade. Yeah. They ignite their their blue gold blade. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get as weird as possible. I like uh, it. And bef- as they go to fight, the score kicks in. Oh 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 yep. oh! It would be epic. Oh 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 oh! My 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 poker face, my my poker face. It would be epic. But it would not be Star Wars. Or or bop doop da ba do wop do da ba. Like with the a lights, can you imagine a lightsaber duel going on with? I mean, it's like people do a lot of really good like edits. Yes, like the obviously. Like, like the, yes. the throne room battle from TLJ. Uh huh. I remember that, that like, was great. So I think After my the, favorite was can't was a, don't stop me now. If yes, I'm such a good time. That was amazing. Oh man, that was like in like May of 2018 after it came out in digital. Everyone right. started making their own edits of it. That was great. That was it great. Was no, amazing. I but it's I like, honest, it, dude, it would be like if. They started, uh, um, if if they started like doing that throne room battle, and this started. Who died recently? By the way, you heard that? Yeah, sad. This is our tribute to them. Sounds of Wayne, the bassist. Hold on, um, I gotta turn it off before we get. Flagged on the YouTube version. We probably already did. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, no, no. Um, but but instead they change it to Padme's mom has got it going on. Or Benny's mom has got Yeah, anyway. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's you're welcome. Annie's mom. No, um, it is Annie's mom. <laughs> it would be so Leia's would, mom has got it. It would it take could, me Oh my out. gosh. It's the song that keeps on giving, Scotty. I go continue with your point. It would take me out, yes, but I don't know yeah. if it would break all of it for me. It would be immediately it would, it'd honest, be like, wait a second. This is strange. If Quentin Tarantino goes from like, I don't want to do a Star Trek movie anymore, I want to do a Star Wars movie, yeah. he would 100% pull that. Oh, he yeah. Would pull, it'd he be would badass, pull, uh, though. I'm I don't know if it would be Stacy's mom, but it would be badass. It, it would, would be No, like, yeah, it would be like some like... Obscure. Ni- some obscure 1960s like... <laughs> Alt rock song or whatever. You Huge know? garage rock, yeah. No, like um, the very beginnings of punk rock. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, go ahead, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the next one we got actually, but thank you, Haley. Mm-hmm. I actually you you made a very long conversation. That was that was a lot. <laughs> we that like, was good. Do you mind? Do you mind you if I take this one? Yeah, take this one. This one. This I was setting you up. Amazing. I was setting you up because I really love this. Like Star Wars line by line. Um. You, Great you, picture, by the way, of the uh, of the. Um, you see it, the uh, what is Sebulba? Lord Jesus, cannon junkie. It's Sebulba, a Doug. Well, it is. It, it is Sebulba. I think it's like. A, oh no, never mind. It's it's a. It is a Doug with a lightsaber. Oh, it's awesome. Um, but Star Wars line by line uh, at SW. Uh, I'm gonna say I X I. Um, you you get me. You get my sense of humor, <laughs> and so uh, shout out to you, but. They they said I love this. 
If I die before they release the digital version of the theatrical versions, I will no longer be a Star Wars fan. <laughs> and what is great about that, it's a thinker. It's a thinker. It is a yeah, thinker. Like, there. It took or me a Or maybe it isn't, and I'm just like, it took me a minute. I was no, like, it did. wait. No, yeah, because... If you die, then you're just dead. You're not anything, you know. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> like, you will be dead. You, you, you truly yeah. no depending, longer be a depending depending on man. how you feel about the afterlife. You're like up in heaven or something. Go like ah, come on, man. They just released. I'm that. not. I'm not watching any more Star Wars. <laughs> I, Throws God, can you the can you just ban it? Can you just ban it from heaven? Because I can't even. I can't even right now. So, if I die before but, we release a digital version of I mean, the after version, I will no, I will no longer be a Star Wars. It's very clever. <laughs> I love it. It's super it's, clever. It's so good. Um, I forget exactly what they said the other day, but it was like about. Uh, oh, it was about changing that scene with uh, Ray Skywalker. Mm-hmm. They said, but I, he, they would have the the creature that the lady is leading be an actual EOP, and then after Ray says Ray Skywalker, the EOP would fart. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the point of this comment oh. that was made by Star Wars line by line is like it's almost to me it's almost like the the most clever of the sitcom jokes that you laugh at home but the studio audience did it yeah. didn't click you know what I mean right, like, right 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 it's one of those side comments that people make that are just like hilarious but like could never work but I don't know I, I love right. it because. <laughs> but it's true. It's it's they, the line you give they to the character different. who who says nothing but zingers yes. the whole time. But like, so, yeah, if you yeah, think yeah. about it, the digital versions of the theatrical cuts, be it the original trilogy, be it the prequel trilogy, they are all different. And you never know. Maybe even in the future, we might have. Uh, there might be some variations between the theatrical cut and the at home <laughs> cut that we are not aware right. of. You know, sorry, sorry. You said the sitcom thing, and now I can't unsee Michael Scott in a in a confessional on the office saying, "If I die before they release a digital version of the theatrical versions of Star Wars, I, I won't, will no longer be a Star Wars fan." It's just as simple as that. And like I can just see but it. But for that character, it's funny because he's not aware. And then, yeah. it, it, but, but for <laughs> us, it's, I don't know. I don't mean to pick apart. The it's humor. like the. It's just sorry. Great. No, it's like that. It's like the Michael Scott line. We're. I'm gonna, dude. Oh, okay. We're. I love the office. Well, this was a great <laughs> episode of the bomb. You know, but also, yes. Thank you, everyone, for really writing in thank because you this guys. was a this was a fun episode conceptually, and when it came out of our mouths, I really enjoyed it. And it's one of these things that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's when it came out of the mouth tubes. <laughs> yeah, the mouth tube. <laughs> Um, the long mouth tube log, but, um, Ooh, the long mouth tube home. That sounds like a, what is it? What does it sound like? Title of your title of your porn parody. I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the curtain has fell. Snow's curtain has fell. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, this was a good one and I really hope everyone got a chance to enjoy it. Maybe found something silly that they don't like in Star Wars. If you did, you can always leave a comment under this on YouTube. You can always message us personally because I'm very interested to hear what some people had their gripes with. But maybe how you coped with the gripe is a big thing too. Yeah. How do you overlook the frustration you have? Because that's a, that's a big thing. How can you overlook something that you disliked? Because it's easy, it's easy to get fixated on it, but it's also easy to kind of overlook it too. That's just me. You know what I, I wonder why no one really latched on to it is why did Snoke have effing curtains in his thing? It was like, I just really like that they make they make me feel real snazzy. I feel I mean, royal. He is, he is palpable. They make me feel like a true leader. You do his, I'm you trying really, to do my best like that was pretty good. His his cadence yeah. is very difficult to me. Yeah, because it's very like man. Andy Andy Circus is just. I think he's partially insane in the best way possible because he's just. That dude's amazing. I love yeah. Andy Circus. Yeah, but uh, I I have been every voice you have ever heard inside your head. Sorry, that was me being Palpatine. Um, I see. I can do that with my mouth. I did that. That sounds just like oh, you do. Let me show you, Kylo. Come here, Kylo. I'll show you. Put your hands in front of your mouth. I have no fingers on this hand, but it still works. 
You see. All right, let's plug it and leave. It's called Foley. It's called Foley work. I used to work with Ben Burt. <laughs> that would probably break it. That would probably break oh, it for me. I worked with my old master, Bert. <laughs> um, Bert. Anyway, guys. Um, so, yeah, follow us uh, if uh, if you're still there um, at the Bombad Cast on all social medias. Um, <laughs> I think I, I think I made Scotty. Uh, I think Scotty ran away or something because I uh, I, I uh, embarrassed myself. So hi, um, we're we're gonna just go ahead and see yourself out. So Scott, hey, what's up? You're back. Are you back? <laughs> oh, I'm back. I'm sorry. I was I was uh, busy um, wiping my butt with uh, your throat my hand of toilet paper with my fingernails. <laughs> what the heck? Oh. <laughs> I caught a trout in the in the stream out back, and I'm just like, we ran out of toilet paper six days ago. It's been terrible. Um, anyway, <laughs> no. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on this wonderful excursion. Um, next next time, we'll take you to the beaches of Cozumel. Um, but we have a very exciting <laughs> announcement coming up in in I guess right now, currently we have an amazing guest for next week's episode. Um, so by the time of recording this, we haven't done our session yet, but we are super excited to talk about the DNA of star Wars with the one and only a new member coming in of the one and only club. And that is Ken Knapsack himself from force center and formerly from uh, collider Jedi council. So that's been a hero of Jerry and I's since I love the cadence of your voice, how much it changed when you went from force center to Jedi council. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a tremendous loss no. because he was oh, the most man. amazing well, person on it. I Ken just loved was, Ken having him was on there. The best on there, and and uh, everyone on there did great. But yeah, yes. yeah, you're right. Like, dude, how this is a dream psyched are for you? Us. Oh my god, we're just Jerry's... knocking all of them off the list. You I know. know. Like, who do we want to do a podcast? People we with? love yeah, yeah, yeah. and people we admire are just coming onto our show now, and watch, it's just like, watch your back, Joseph Scrimshaw and Jennifer Landa. We're coming for you next. Yes, I'm just. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I feel so lucky to have people like this on our show and. What a better topic for him. So we're super stoked about that. But yeah, yeah um, you could find me at Scotty Jero um, on Twitter or the Scotty Jero on Twitter. Um, pretty much if you just look up my name some way, you'll find it. Um, same with Bomb Adcast. Um, you can also find Jerry at the Cannon Junkie or maybe just Cannon Junkie. I don't remember. Um, yeah, we at do the these. Cannon Junkie. We plug like, it's so funny. I feel like. We have to do this. I feel like it's a it's a podcast tradition, but like I'd imagine most people know how to find this if they haven't. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm naive. You never know. It's you never know if someone's showing up who has never like listened to a podcast before. Doesn't God, know what social media is. Imagine like, if, if, if they they exist. We were they, they exist. Imagine if this episode was not only someone's first episode of the Bombad Cast. Imagine if this was their first Star Wars podcast, and imagine if this was their very first podcast ever. I would almost feel kind of bad. Like, They'd be the like, TV, well, feel, I'm done with podcasts forever. This was ridiculous. <laughs> Could you imagine? Um, but uh, what was I going to say? You can <laughs> – I don't know what I was going to say now, man. Um, this is completely off the rails again, which is our MO. Uh, but – yeah, yeah, you guys can follow us at Bombacast and all that stuff. You know you know where to find us. But uh, Oh, I was going to say, oh, Scotty, we yes. just passed another milestone. We did. What was it? As as of this recording, we are past 800 followers on Twitter. Yes. Which, it's just on Twitter, and I know it's like, you know. What? That's yeah. just on Twitter, but like, <laughs> yeah. but like it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a thing. It the is a thing for us. followers you get on Twitter, um, I think... I think the more serious the Last Jedi trolls take you. And so we're waiting. We're almost there, Scotty. We almost have enough followers for them to start like bombing our tweet threads. I can't wait. So Looking oh, it's forward gonna be great. To it. It's gonna be just like all the it's gonna be like all the apparent uh uh Polynesian ancient Polynesian chieftains who are looking for virgins to throw into volcanoes in our tw- our uh YouTube comments <laughs> because uh they, 
we we get called virgins a lot on there. That'd There's be so funny. I got another like, one. Guys, like, this is my absolute new favorite have a sacrifice? one. I love the way this was typed. Okay, this is from a guy named Thomas Craig. This is a new one, by the way. He said he obviously got abused when he was young, and half of them are also eighty percent. Remember, it's just a film, people. Then cry emoji. <laughs> A emoji of a cucumber being cut and water coming out of it, and little drops of water. Does that mean my dick got cut off? <laughs> I'm kind of confused on the cucumber. It's a cucumber. Is he trying um, to say it turned him on? Like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a cucumber being cut up, and water's what? coming out of them. I love that. The, I got. I obviously got abused. I, I can't was, tell you. I can't <laughs> tell you how many times I've. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> I. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been cutting up a cucumber to put in a, to a lasagna and like been crying because the of the fumes coming off the cucumber. I don't. Why could you not find the onion emoji? Is there an onion emoji? I don't really get. We're gonna have to. Okay, we're gonna have to. If you guys know what that is, if we haven't figured it out by by the release of this episode, uh, uh, we, we're going way over time. So, uh, tweet at us and let us know what a cut up cucumber means about someone crying. These new comments have been incredible. Liking a movie. <laughs> These um, they are amazing, oh. man. That's oh my. That's God. great. Well, enjoy yourself isolation, guys. Um, hope it's going great. Yeah, seriously, we love y'all. If y'all need anything from us, you let us know. We'll put out as much content as we can. If you want us to just balance things on our noses, we'll do that. Uh, honestly, it's, <laughs> it's 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 driving us just as crazy as you are for listening to this. But uh, thank you so much for everyone joining. And um, Gerald the Candled Junkled, what should the wonderful people to do? Old do what should they do? <laughs> I love how you you turn into Paul Rudd from I Love You Man. Oh, like sometimes great movie. like great uh, movie. How's it going, Jobin? <laughs> pretty, pretty pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> how's it how's it how's it how's it going? How's it being? Or something like it's funny. <laughs> I do it all the time too. Uh you can follow us at the Bombat Fam, follow us on all our social medias. You can follow us on all of the platforms. And until next time, uh, stay home and stay bomb. <laughs> you began it with a burp and you ended it with a burp. It's just like I went, <laughs> I went full Phantom Menace. That's what I'm calling every time you ask me. Oh, Jerry, let me stop recording. Welcome, Star Wars, line by line. <laughs>